Hello and welcome to Cha'a with Roma. Today we are going to talk about three ways I handle my inner critic. I think it's a very important topic to discuss and to reflect on. Handling our negative thoughts about our abilities as writers, as poets, is a very important skill to acquire. Well, I've been quite lucky because I work full-time as a nurse practitioner with a specialty in high-intensity cognitive behavioral therapy. So most of the time when I get all these negative automatic thoughts, I CBT myself. You know, negative automatic thoughts, we all have them, right? Like they keep on coming, we don't necessarily think of them consciously, but sometimes they would just come, right? Like there are 70,000 to 100,000 thoughts a day that comes randomly with regards to inner critic these thoughts would be like oh i'm not good enough or uh, this poetry magazine rejected me so I must be useless or i would never ever finish this draft of poem which i initially thought would be my masterpiece or i would never get a publisher and sometimes it's hard because because when you have that negative automatic thought and it's influenced by the things that has happened to you, especially most recently or in the past, you extremely believe this thought, especially if we're in that sad, very disheartened mood. The very first thing I do in handling my inner critic is I challenge my thoughts. So what I do is slow down and look at something you know, look at something like, for example, this cup, something that's tangible. What are the facts about this, this, um, this cup? And what are the opinions about this cup? Because sometimes that's what we have to do, especially with regards to our inner critic. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, hang on, are these actually facts? Or are they just my opinion? You know, am I just catastrophizing here? Because like, for example, with this cup, right? Um, what are the facts? Well, it's a cop. Universally known, it's a cop. And at the moment, there are, you know, there's a little bit dregs of um, machete there. What are the opinion, my opinions about this, this, um, this cop? Well, it's pretty. <laughs> for some other people, it might not be pretty, but for me, it's pretty. It's an opinion. And I think it's quite light, you know, for a ceramic cup. I would look back into my thoughts that I am not good enough. I'll never get this point published. Is it really a fact or is it just an opinion? I'll never get accepted in this landscape. Is this a fact or is this an opinion? But actually, no matter how much I believe my inner critic at that time, at the end of the day, it's just an opinion. It could change. The, the second thing that I like doing Especially when my inner critic is trying to tell me that you cannot write anything else. That's it. You're finished. You're done. It's normal to be paralyzed by our fear. When we look at fight or flight response, actually fight or flight or freeze response, that's our body's own mechanism to, to save us from danger. Like for example, if this room is on fire right now, my brain would switch my fight or flight response on. And I'll be either fighting that, that fire, trying to put it out, or fleeing the room. Or sometimes it would freeze me up, you know, because can't just, um, can't deal with it. Can't deal with, ah, too much stress. Inner critics are like that. They're like a fire telling your, butt, your brain that there's danger here. Uh, your inner critic saying to you, you'll never ever be accepted by the poetry landscape, you'll never ever get into this magazine, or you'll never ever get into this shortlist, those kind of things, that's, that's our danger. Our brain's interpreting that as danger, but the truth is, that's not real danger, that's not real fire. Again, it's, it's in, our, um, in our minds. However, because we believe it as danger, our body would go into fight, flight, or freeze response. Sometimes we'll just abandon a project because we're so scared that we'll never ever gonna finish it or we're never ever gonna be successful in it. Sometimes we'll just like procrastinate or freeze. So what I do is I set a time in a day when no matter what, especially I find this helpful when I feel like I cannot write anything else, I don't have that energy, I'm so tired, etc. 
deep down i'm just scared i'm just scared that i might write something bad so i set a time in a day um not a not, not a lot of time maybe just like two minutes or five minutes of just free writing and sometimes what i like to do is in that space of two minutes or five minutes i would play a particular song a particular song which i don't understand fully i don't fully understand because so it could be like um, a Chinese song that I used to listen to when I was growing up because um, in the Philippines there were quite a lot of chi novella we call them chi novella so Chinese telenovela um, or Japanese song and as soon as that as soon as that song has stopped I would stop writing and there it is I've written a piece so I cancel my fight or flight response and the third thing that I do to handle my inner critic is I look back on how far I came from and not only that I look at who are the friends I made along the way there are miles and miles of journey that we've already taken so from that little girl or young woman in Wolverhampton cleaning and changing bedpans to someone who's actually got published in this magazine or got a book now thank you lord it's it's a long way and sometimes it's nice to to give yourself a pat on the back but not only that it's very important to create that sense of like community within the writing world if i had never written i wouldn't have met the very supportive friends group of friends that i have now i don't really have much friends in real life <laughs> i'm a very busy person <laughs> maybe three three friends in real life but most of my friends now uh, i met through writing you know kostya chalakis alice healer uh natalie lynn boulderstone and they are really good friends uh, for the people that i didn't mention you know i love you <laughs> but um yeah, it's nice to look back and say, oh yeah, I've come a long way. And to be fair, even if you hadn't, if you feel like you hadn't come a long way, even if it's just from like five years ago, you haven't really written anything to now you're starting to write, that's still change. You know, that's those incremental change would, would help you. So those are my three things that I do to handle my inner critic. And of course, um, a bonus one is I spend time with my family and go outside in the real world. <laughs> in the real world. So I, I like walking with my dog. My dogs, actually, two dogs and my husband. I hope that inspired you. And until next time, here at Cha'a with Roma. Mm -hmm.